Alright, so in this video what I'm going to be talking about is how to extend the result that we got in the last video where we had this type of integral and we used double integrals to evaluate it using polar coordinates to a, an integral of this form where we have an incomplete quadratic in the exponential, in the power of the exponential function. So just to do a little recap of what completing the square is, so that's the technique we're going to use. We have, let's say we have the following function, ax plus b squared is going to be what? It's going to be ax to the power of 2 plus 2 abx plus b squared. And obviously if we want to extend this, we're going to have a squared x squared plus 2abx equals to ax plus b squared minus b squared. So now that we have put it into this form, we can see that this is a quadratic of the same form as this. So essentially what we'll have here is we're going to have alpha equals to square root of a. So alpha is just going to be the square root of a. And, oh, actually, actually it's going to be the other way around. So, sorry, so a is going to be the square root of alpha, of course, because we have a, a squared here. And then this term here is going to be equal to beta. So beta is going to be equal to um, this particular form here. Or in other words, we can write b is equal to beta over 2 times a a. Or in this case, what we can write is square root of alpha, which, because we just said a is equal to square root of alpha. So we have these two things here. And what we can do with this now is that we can write the expression alpha x squared plus beta x is going to be equal to alpha x plus beta 2 times square root of alpha squared minus b squared over 4 alpha. And basically what we can do with this is we can say we can make a, a variable substitution here. We can call this y because this is the same thing as saying that this whole thing is y, and then if we integrate with respect to y, we're going to get back to the expression that we had. So in general, what we want to do with this is we want to write, rewrite our integral minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared plus beta x is now going to be, because dy is going to be equal to dx, right? It's just going to, if we take the derivative of y with respect to x, we just get a 1, and then if we uh, take the dx to the other side, we get this expression. So this is going to be the same as writing e to the minus alpha y squared plus beta squared over 4 alpha. And now that we have this, we can actually separate it because we only have, we have this term here which can decompose into the following expression. So this is going to decompose into the following. This is going to be e to the power of beta squared for alpha. And then actually we can take that out of the integral because that's just going to be a constant, right? That's just going to be a constant. So we can take it out of the integral just to make things a little bit clearer. And then we're going to have the integral, the same integral minus infinity of minus alpha y squared times dy. And we already know the result of this. We know that it is going to be square root of pi over alpha. So in the end, we're going to end up with this expression. We're going to end up with this expression, and that's a really, really nice result. So this is something that you really need to know. And it's really easy to derive just by completing the square and that power. Similarly, we can solve integrals that have the following form. So I'm just going to get rid of this now. We can solve integrals that have a full quadratic on the power. So we're going to have integral minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared plus beta x plus some constant c times dx. And hopefully you can see that this is the same as saying e to the power of c, or in this case, let's call this gamma. Let's call this little thing here gamma, since we're using Greek letters. Let's call this constant gamma such that we have e to the gamma times the integral of e to the minus alpha x squared plus beta x plus gamma dx. And sorry, I just took out the gamma, so we're just going to have this expression here. And we already found the value of this. We found the value to be pi over alpha 
times e to the v squared over 4 alpha. So in the end, this implies that the whole integral is going to be the following value. So beta squared 4 alpha plus gamma. So this is going to be the final value of this part here for any quadratic polynomial that we have here. So that's a really neat result that we have. And there is yet another important result that we can derive from this, and it is the fact that, well, we can get an expression like this. Let's say that instead of writing this integral, we're only interested in the following boundary, so from zero to infinity, because let's say we were dealing with something like time. We know that time is not negative, so obviously it wouldn't make sense to have negative time, so we would only go from zero to infinite time. And what would we get if we had this expression, for example? Well, clearly we should have half of what we would get from the full limits minus infinity to infinity of e to minus alpha x squared dx. Because remember that the Gaussian function, which is defined by this expression or this expression, is symmetrical. It is always symmetrical about the either the origin in this case, or it is just symmetrical about a generic axis here in the case of a function like this. And because it has that symmetry, the area on, on both sides of that axis of symmetry are going to be the same. So this is the same as saying half of this full integral. And then if we know the result of that, we know that's, that's just going to be half of square root of pi on alpha. And we can apply the same logic. So if we wanted to find the integral from zero to infinity of this particular function, what we would do is we would just half of this value and that's a really interesting thing. And this is something that we will be using in future videos. But just for now, this is essentially how you evaluate Gaussian integrals. And there's a lot of really interesting things that you can perform with it. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can extend this to integrals of the form, say we have minus infinity x to the power of n times e to minus alpha x squared times dx. So we're going to be employing similar techniques, but we're going to introduce a new integral technique, which is called differentiation under the integral sign. And we're going to see that that's going to be so useful that we will be able to evaluate an integral like this without having to ever even utilize integration by parts. Because you, you might imagine that for an expression like this, you need to use integration by parts until you reduce this uh, polynomial here to essentially order zero or it just becomes a constant but we can employ techniques similar to this and using these values that we have just derived to actually solve that integral so we will have a look at that in the next video